What's up, kingdom? Wanna go from this into this awesome character as fast as possible? Now you can. And today we'll explain you how to do it as fast as possible. This way will work only if you already have some character that can farm monoliths. But also it can work for your first character if you know that your build is good. So if you're following one of the like best build guides, you probably will be able to do it. After you pick your master class and going back to console chambers, and depending on how good you know the game, it will take you from about like two hours if you're just starting, or maybe like 20-30 uh, minutes if you already know what you're doing. You will go to sheltered wood. And that's first step of becoming super powerful and cool character. So there will be a total of five steps, but this one is really important. And normally you will go to the surface where our quest location is it, and then go into cultist camp and so on and so on. But right now it's basically even added over here, this icon, alternate leveling pass. This route will bypass many areas, but it requires access to and completion of arbor. So that's where we're going. We're instantly going to the top right. And if you're wondering why you need to do it, why do you want to skip areas? Because all guides probably will tell you that you should beat campaign first to unlock all idle slots. But now I will show you how to do it a lot faster than beating full campaign. So we're going to the surface, this place. And if you just go forward, you will get this teleport location and you will see that you need to go to the like top right or to the right corner. But instead, if you open up map, you will see there's a door over here. That's where we're going in. This door will lead us to the cave and eventually to the lightless arbor. And you already probably wondering <laughs> what build I'm using. I will show you guys. This build is amazing. And here you will see a door, but to go through, you need a key, lightless arbor key. To get this key, you need to clear some monoliths. So if you have a key, you just enter it and go inside. There will be different levels of this dungeon. What you need to know is tier one is level 20. It will be easy for you to clear this dungeon if you got a key. And tier two will be level 65. And dungeon boss will drop additional exalted items. On tier three with level 88, enemies will drop exalted weapons and at tier four, you, will, you can farm a lot of idols, but enemy will have double health and damage. So if you just want to go through, pick tier 1, and you will unlock new tiers when you beat previous tiers. And also there's spe special drops from the boss. So if you're farming for special boss items, then it's better to farm at better levels if you can, because these items will have better legendary potential, better tiers and other stuff. So now as you can see we get additional skill, reactive word. And that's coolest part. Every dungeon, and I will show all dungeons today, will have different mechanics. So this mechanic is illumination. While you're burning amber attached to you, it loses illumination when you hit reducing the radius. And when you're slaying amber elementals, you will regain this burning amber. And mechanic of this dungeon is basically enemies outside of this light will deal more damage and take much less damage. So this dungeon is really easy if you can do melee class, and I'm melee class, but it's like a lot harder for range class. You will have additional ability on button D, and you can just toss this light to any place you like, and that's basically how you play if you're playing range character. So you're tossing it away, attacking enemies in the light, getting this light back with pressing of D again. So let's finish this dungeon. And dungeon is kind of like labyrinth. Uh, I advise you opening this map as like soon as possible and then trying to navigate yourself because you will see this like blockades all over the place. You can't go through and you need to find another way forward. So that's fun part. Map will always be the same, but you need to find the way how to go through. I didn't know, but this Lich build is awesome. So fast and so fun. Eventually you will find next door and we'll have new modifiers. Enemies will drop more weapons. That's nice, let's go. And when you enter to the second place of this dungeon, there's new mechanic, it's root wall. So you kind of need to learn by yourself that when you toss this stuff over here, you can easily deplete this wall, but also there's this light over here and you need to stay nearby to burn it down to go through. So this kind of mechanics that you need to learn when you're going to the boss. Here we are, second stage, quickly running through and watching for our exit. And next door, 
new modifiers. Let's go. And third stage is boss himself. Make sure to get all your cooldowns ready and get ready for battle. Proceed. So there's the boss, Big Titan. You need to first of all destroy these root walls. So make sure to light them up. And then press torch over here. It needs to activate King Link. That's the only way how you can do this stuff. Await his attacks. He will stun you. And when you got the skin link, just teleport over here. Destroy this door now and light up this area. So you need to destroy two areas first. To the left and to the right. Await his attacks. He is just doing like some random strikes that will possibly stun you. And when he's lighting up, you can destroy him. He will just lay down. And you can enter the mountain. Looks pretty easy, but for like low level character, it will be a lot harder, of course. And hardest part is that you need to use this illumination on this part over here to activate King Link. And at the same time, you will be kinda in the dark. It will be a lot harder to await his attacks. And he will spawn a lot of minions and they will fight versus you. But that's not it. There's additional stuff. Stone Titan's heart. So attacks is really simple again. There is like long range stuff that shooting you, a little bit of stuns, some like rays, some minions. And you just evade these attacks and destroy this heart. So this boss is pretty fun to play with, a lot of interactions. But when you destroy this boss, you will get some drop. Most notable drop is Peak of the Mountain. It's just crazy increase in your critical strikes. But you won't be able to leech from critical strikes. And also you will get bonus to attributes. So most of the time you will farm this boss mostly for this item. But now we can go to the next part. And here will be boss vault. So how it works. Basically you talk with this bro. And depending on how much gold you have. This vault will offer you choices. And you can just disline or accept choices. And you can disline. Uh, you don't need to accept instantly. But it will raise price every time. So you just need to think, do you want to invest gold in it? And basically, maybe you want to add some like boots. So then accept. I don't want boots, let's this line. Now it's 1k and 600. Many runes, probably I'll take it. Again, it will be doubled almost even more if you accept. Unique item to random chest. No, I don't want it. So let's decline. And when you decline, it will increase price, but it won't increase as much as if you accept. Duplicates all unique items from every chest. Whoa, let's do it. And basically, if you got a lot of gold, you will have a lot of stuff in here, but stop when you want and press enter vault. Now, this beautiful bro opens his mouse and we can go inside. There will be nothing here, but here we are, chest. We just open it and get everything we asked for. And we can continue our journey to the right side. So here we're going to the next part, Corrupted Lake. And look where we are. So normally we're getting to this place from completely another place uh, closer to this like teleport location in the top side. But when we're going through Lightless Arbor, we come in from the bottom side and we got additional quest to explore this area. And explore means just go to the like top of the map. Fun part that it will be almost impossible to activate teleport. It will be like far away from you. And then you just go to the lake Liet over here. And we are in the completely different era right now in the barrel era. And again, but from the rising lake, instead of going to the felt wood, our first teleport and so far bastion then. This can give you a nice skip of campaign too. But instead go to the fallen tower first from where you started and you will arrive at Imperial Titima and continue to Darkling Pier. Then you board Imperial Dreadnought. And after arriving, you need to destroy this boss to break Alric from his chains and activate Signal. This will teleport you to the Shining Cove. And Shining Cove is Imperial Era coast over here. Normally you're going to Majelka and getting a lot of quests over here and that's a pretty big part of the campaign. Instead, we go going to the right side and picking alternate leveling pass again. To do it, go to the right side, there will be doors and just take this teleport. As you already probably know, you will be in the same place but in different era. And here just navigate the ship or whatever it is. If you see teleport nearby, then you're in the right place, just open this bridge and go in. There will be a little boss, take the tablet from this altar or whatever it is and go into temporal sanctum. Make sure 
to get your legendary and and of course we need temporal sanctum key to enter so same rules over here different levels different tiers of weapon and armor drops from the boss this boss uh, drops really nice rings and dungeon level is 55 so you already should be around like level 40 probably at least to just try this dungeon it's uh, pretty hard and there's our new mechanic for this dungeon it's temporal shift you just press d and changing times so in this era you like have all entrances blocked but you're going into imperial era and everything is fine go inside and again it will be a labyrinth with blocked like walls and other stuff but you can change time and right do you see we got this blocked pass over here but in different times there is no blocked bars and vice versa you're like approaching some gates change your time and see they probably will be opened that's really fun labyrinth and rules are the same like in previous dungeons you just need to go through like two levels of the dungeon and you will face boss but doors uh, will be accessible only from this ruined era and normally you progress through this location in this divine era but when you're approaching boss door you need to go to the void era this boss got quite unique mechanics so in this form she like trying to destroy you but this orb is super dangerous you need to press d to go into this era first now you can get back but she will follow you with different eras then she will do this like stuff on the ground and you can destroy them only in this era like in void era they will be inaccessible you need to go to the imperial era and she will also do, do this crazy stuff but it's easy to escape so to escape this orbs she casting you need to just stand over here like just right here you don't even need to move just stay and you will be fine or just to uh, ask her to get back to this era and destroy her when you get grasp how to fight this boss you will be fine because she can kill you with just one ability but after she's defeated she normally drop in this ring jurula stadidel very nice for gaining word and for spell damage users but coolest part about this dungeon is this place and if you enter to this place in this state in void era it will be inaccessible you need to go to the divine era then enter to the sketch and then you can use item of the same type so you need to make sure you got items of the same type and they should have legendary potential one of these items should be purple and one legendary with legendary potential of course then when you press seal cache you need to go back to void era and you can retrieve your item and your item will become legendary so instead of unique it will become legendary and also get affixes from purple item depending on how much legendary potential your item has if it's legendary potential 4 you will get all four affixes but we continue our journey to radiant dunes going upwards and here we are we can instantly unlock teleport over here and we're back to Majelka again, but that's Majelka of different era. Normally you're going into Majelka from Imperial era, but you want to go to the Divine era first. So go to the right side and you will see this teleport, I mean door to Majelka. But first we'll need to save Zerik and then together go to Majelka. And here you are, you're in Majelka. You can get a lot of quests over here and you will quickly unlock all idle slots and passive points rewards but also you can already join guild of your choice circle of fortune or merchants guild and that's how you easily complete campaign and basically skip all utterly boring missions now you can join your preferred guild so what to do now finish some quests or even run some monoliths or you can go into one more dungeon sulfur bastion you're right now in the burial era and again from where you started normally you're going to the top left and get into the fallen tower imperial tower and doing your quests instead right now we're going to the fell lord wood and that's easy to go to we started in this place and just go to the right a little bit you will see this place felt wood nothing special here we just continue our way and we're going mostly to the right side of this place and we're going to the top side of this place until we find this bridge we pressing the lever it will lower the bridge and we're going top again until we will find this entrance so far bastion there's another dungeon so 
Again, same rules, you will need a key to enter this dungeon. And if you don't know where to get keys, still, they can be farmed by farming monoliths. There's monoliths with the key icon, you get keys over there. Like with 100% chance, and also they randomly drop from time to time. Let's go! And we got completely new mechanic, you will learn how it works basically from the start of this dungeon. And you will see that there is fire on the ground. When you go on the fire, you will take damage. And so what we need to do to not take damage? It's super easy. You just need to press D to translate Soul Fire Shield from Necrotic to Fire Damage. That's it. So red is fire, green Necrotic. Every time you will use it, it will eat some souls. So you will be out of these uses eventually. And right now I don't have any uses, so I will take damage. How to regain the stacks? You just need to destroy some enemies. And as you can see, after each enemy defeated, I'm gaining, regaining the stacks of soul embers. And I can use the shield as far as like as much as I wish. And we're ready to enter to the Soul Fire Bastion. It was just a tutorial level. And here we are again. It's labyrinth. We're just running around. And we need to find exit from this dungeon. Some enemies will throw this necrotic stuff at you, some fire. So you can turn this shield whenever you wish. And we got completely the same rules. It will be random blocks on the road and you need to find your exit. Exit will be always pinged on the map. We will get you a new modifier, so dungeon will become harder. And also there's most of the time multiple doors, so if you don't like these modifiers, you can pick next door. And after two levels, you will be entering the boss room. Same rules, he will drop some special loot. And you will be on this area, he will cast different stuff on you. Normally it will be like starting from fire, and there will be some like fire magic and necrotic magic. So you need to pick correct shield when you're fighting him and when ground changes. Awaiting his attacks is really fun and uh, cool. I like these bosses, they are pretty unique. And some of his abilities is kinda unavoidable. Like, you can't avoid some of his abilities. And that's when you really need to change your shield. And normally he will change his behavior when you hit him a little bit. And that's what unavoidable. When you pick and right shield, it will be fine. And you can stand over here with the red shield. And on this location, it's better to stay with necrotic shield. That's why it's really fun boss. And when you destroy him, he will drop his weapons, armors. Mostly we'll farm him for this ring. Nice for warlocks with fire and necrotic damage that focusing on ward retention. But that's not coolest part. We get into the next part over here in this dungeon, and that's Gambler. But not Gambler you will see in the town. That's why it's really nice to get more souls when you go into this dungeon, you know, defeat more enemies. Because now you can talk with him and use Soul Gamble. Now, instead of your normal gold, you will use souls gathered in this dungeon. And then you normally like buy whatever you like, relics, rings, and you don't know what ring will be given to you. But it's a nice way to get some stuff. And also we got some chance to get exalted items. After you gambled for a bit, go backwards and you will see exit. Divine era, teleport, or time warp. Exit this mountain and you will instantly unlock this teleport location. And as you can see, we're in the divine era. First of all, we are really close to Arena, so if you want, you can go and unlock Arena right now. But we don't need Arena right now, instead we're going to the top right, to Wingari Fortress. Normally you come in here from completely different location, but fun part, you can already do quest over here. Quest in which you need to defeat these horned guys and take this war horn. Now go to the right side of this place, and you will get here a lot faster. And finish your way to here, Berea. Talk with some guys here, you already will unlock some idle slots. But basically continue your way to the top, to the Temple of Herod. First location is the Tundra. And then you'll reach this location. You just use your horn over here that you already got. And it will give you this bridge. Small journey through the temple. And after exiting this cave, you will get to the far wood. That's a completely different area. But eventually we will arrive over here, talk with Grail, he acts like he knows us, but he actually not. So advance with him through this cold spider cave and destroy this big tree, or oh, wherever it is. After tree is destroyed, just talk with this guy and you're ready to go. 
you will be back to Hibaria and need to go downwards now to Solomon Pass. And that's probably the longest part you're doing in this journey, because we need to go through different caves and areas. And finally, we're speaking with Herod. We're ready, Herod, let's go. So Herod will give us blessing. We go teleport back to Hibaria and go into the bottom left until we arrive into Deep Harbor. Just talk with this Yulia and let's go. Go into the bottom right and get an inside burning pier. Here we will need to find two leaders of these bird boys and destroy them. After mission is done, teleport back to the harbor and talk with Herbert, the ferryman. We are ready, let's go. We will be at the Lake Liat again, but in different era. And by going top to Liat Road, there will be invasion, you need to clear it. And now you can talk with architect. Captain Herton is the man you are looking for to get access to coral pools. And you will find him in Titima, of course. In Titima you also get some quests and you can get back to Liat Road, go to the Liat Tower, defeat boss over there and unlock more idle slots like already. And sorry, you will get access to Lagoon Isol, of course. From Lagoon Isol you can do some side quests, but instead of going to Coral Pools or Strength of Storms, you want to go to this door in the middle to Moonlit Shrine. Talk with Architect again, and now we can get back to Strength of Storms and Coral Pools. Here you will find this X or whatever it is. I like to start with Strength of the Storms, teleport back to Lagoon Isol, and then we entering Coral Pools. Pick X from the right side of Coral Pools and get back to Moonlit Shrine. Put this X on the altars and you will get access to Temple of Lagoon. In my opinion, one of the strongest bosses in the game. And basically you need to go forward to sell Sea Floor Colosseum. And here you will face Architect. Not the easiest boss, if you ask me. But after you defeat her, you can go to the next door and get to the Seafloor Coliseum to face even harder boss. Make sure to await his white magic and also this lunar blast. It one shots you. You can damage him directly, you need to deplete uh, his lagoon god tentacles first. You will be transported to the bottom floor, fight to the hardest of enemies and there will be some like this waves. You need to evade them. And then he teleports you back to him, finish his uh, this stuff, defeat tentacles, and in the end he will teleport you back with these gates to Titima. And now you can speak with Yulia again. And finally arrive over here to Sariska. So that's how you make this really cool character as fast as possible, but also you will need some cool builds. Watch them on the screen right now.